What's up guys? Today is very special. You get to see what I carry in my ruck. I got old Alice here with me. She's been faithful for 15 years. This is my first issue rucksack. Still going strong, I still use it, even in my civilian ventures. Maybe you'll learn something, maybe you'll have some tips for me. Either way, we're gonna have fun. Grab yourself a cup of Joe or vodka, nobody can tell because it's not see-through, and let's get to it. First things first, what are we carrying? I like the traditional Leatherman, nothing special. Just a little multi-tool. Any kind of multi-tool works. Whatever you like to wear. Depending on what I'm doing, I usually have some kind of tack light on me. This is an original Surefire. I used this in Romani in 2005 and it's still going strong. Depending on what kind of woods I'm in, I also carry a K-Bar on my hip. But other than that, I don't carry other knives because between the multi-tool and the K-Bar, I think I'm good to go on knives. I don't like to be that guy. So probably one of the most important things you'll ever carry is your water source. This is a 10 liter MSR dromedary bag. 10 liters is huge, right? They have a six liter, they have a four liter. I went ahead and got the 10 liter because I figure, well, if I take the small one on shorter trips, I will still need a larger one when I go on large trips. So then I get to get two. I decided to buy one. And if I'm going on a short trip, I just don't fill it up as much. And it has suction in it. So, you know, you can put two liters of water in there and use that much of the bag and you'll still get suction through the hose. So you don't have to worry about that empty space. Now in the army, we're issued Camelback stuff and it's pretty good, but it, it is nowhere near as tough as this freaking MSR dromedary bag. You can even use that for showering if you want to. So on top of that, as far as water goes, you see I have my canteen cup there. America. Oh, it tastes like freedom. I got a lot of this stuff 15 years ago or longer when I first came in the army and it's still going strong. So military grade is usually pretty good. So I have two ways to pour water quickly. I got the big ass dromedary bag or I got a little canteen. I always have some kind of waterproofing case. This is actually my better one, grunt style, but it's a lot thinner. It'll fit your phone and some keys in there. It's got a nice little D-ring and it's waterproof. So as I said, this is my original issue. I got this 15 years ago when I had to sew this glint tape on myself. Now obviously it doesn't work, it's that old, but I keep it on for nostalgia. So let's work our way around the ruck. Basically in this pouch, I put everything that I need to get to quickly without opening the ruck. Headlamp, right there, easily accessible. Nice little clip on it to hang it up inside my shelter. So I got some hand warmers, got an emergency space blanket, which I don't use that as a blanket. I will show you guys how to really use that later on. Got a basic patch kit. A minor first aid kit. Now, usually it depends on where I'm going, what I'm doing, what I'll bring. This last one is packed just for a simple overnighter. You know, you always got these little waterproof bottle things from other products. Ibuprofen 800. If you served in any branch, you know about this. So working our way around, the Army issues us an e-tool, and trenching tool. However, this one has a pickaxe end on it and it's pretty damn sharp. I've actually chopped down small trees with this thing. So these D-rings are mainly to hold my E-tool and my ax, but I also put them on the outside in case I need to clip something real quick. This ax, it's a uh, Miltech. I know there are Miltechs, mil specs, and all that in the States, but these are made in Germany, which spells fun. Good quality hatchet, nice and sharp, heavy, and you can use the other side as a hammer. These clips you can basically use for all kinds of stuff. I like to put them on the outside so they're easily accessible. These straps up here, I will also clip extra things like, you know, a backup compass. I'll put that on my belt loop when I actually enter the forest. But for now I have it here so I don't lose it. Also put my sleeping mat through there as we have learned to do. Now I usually hate these kind of sleeping pads but it's winter and this has reflective properties. So I've been bringing this with me. Otherwise, I have a pretty tiny self-inflating mattress, but hey, it's winter time. This is what I'm using. Canteen pouch, and I do have water treatment tablets in the water treatment tablet pocket. All right, now here, good old, this thing, not the best quality in the world, but it locks and it's great. No problems with this thing at all. 
Bungee cords right here. They don't bother me here because you have a space between your pad and the back. So that sits right there in that space. And these are great. Bungee cords are awesome if you want to set up and break down in a hurry. I can usually fit five or six right here. So last, sort of on the outside. I like to have tape hanging, but I don't want to hang it on the outside with the other crap. And I always like extra D-rings. So I have an extra D-ring right here on the inside part. And then when it's all closed up and I got my sleep mat and everything on top, I have duct tape easily accessible right here. Now, if I'm in a tactical situation or doing field training with my unit, this will be the 90 mile an hour tape, which is the standard army green. But guys, duct tape works way better than the army crap. I'm sorry to say. So I bring duct tape with me on my own adventures. There are a ton of pockets and room on this thing. You have these three large ones on the outside, and then you have these three ones here. You have the other parts I've showed you, and you can mount stuff on the outside. Very functional bag. So these three pockets, more things that I need on the fly, maybe. So I got all my 550 cord. This is my little power pouch. I have my big ass outdoor rugged charger. And then I have one of these emergency flashlights that, that requires no batteries. So you always need a backup flashlight and that's LED, it's pretty damn good. And then I got spare batteries down at the bottom. <coughs> and also I have a couple extra cables down in there. So, cheap ass tent stakes. Now if I'm doing army stuff, I will bring the cheapest tent stakes in existence. Because anything you do in the military, something gets lost or stolen or broken. So I try not to use any of my good stuff. I have really cool tent stakes on my own. But I was just doing some uh, gear testing the other night and I brought these along just in case I lost or broke one. This is also where I keep my fire starting facilitation devices. There is this myth going around that you can boil water with tea light candles. You can, but you need about four of the large ones and a lot of time. So I use tea candles to help get fires going, okay? You know, practicing bushcraft and making fire out of nothing is fun, it's good training, but if I just wanna get a fire going so I can eat and go to sleep, then tea light candles will help get things going. And you know, this little thing burns for four hours. So you light one of these babies, put all your fuel and tinder on top of it, and you're good to go, man. You don't have to do any of the MacGyver stuff. There is my actual fire starting kit. So I got the ferro rod, so I've got a nine volt battery and the scrub pad, the metal scrub pad. That will light up stuff in a hurry. It's good to have. So here's something that a lot of people don't think of. They bring their water purification stuff and all this other water treatment things. But I keep these with me everywhere. These are electrolytes, not the isotonic uh, three vitamin and mineral things. These, this is actually all 11 or 12, however you want to count them, electrolytes, right? Think about it. You got all this water purification stuff. If you're really in a bad place and you eat or drink the wrong thing or you just happen to get something on you, you could be bumming, okay? So electrolytes are not going to treat any kind of bacterial infection that you'll get in the woods, but they will keep your body a little bit stable on electrolytes and water to help you get to that situation. If any, if any of you guys had dysentery or, or any kind of serious GI infection, you know what I'm talking about. If you go to a good doctor, they'll give you antibiotics and electrolytes, okay, to help keep you a little bit normal. And it helps, it helps you feel a lot better. Plus on those nights when you're training with the foreign armies and you get to drink a lot of beer with them, the electrolytes help with the hangover in the morning. Now these outside pockets, I put food in this one. So what do I have left from the other day? Some nuts. Fat is probably the best thing for you to eat out in the field, especially in the winter. Fat makes your body work harder, raising your body temperature, help keep you warm. And fat is the longest fuel source we have. So I think in this one, I keep a lot of my rain gear to grab really quickly if I need to. Most of the stuff I have for the winter time is waterproof or water resistant anyway, but I got these one of these little cool jackets that folds up to itself. Got some extra socks in the bottom up here. It, of course, wrapped up. Got an old Shimog that actually was given to me in Afghanistan, I believe. My translator was actually downtown somewhere, thought about me, and got it. And over here, standard army issue poncho. This is the first one I was issued 15 years ago. 
and it's still going. So you have another accessory pouch right here. And here I kind of keep some secondary items, things I don't really need immediately. So look, this is the Alice pack. This thing is 15 years old and it still holds. There's no rips in it or anything. Now I know there are better knives out there, but the K-Bar is kind of sentimental to me being a military dude. But I love the serrated edge. You can cut down a small tree with this thing. If you have to defend yourself, this will tear somebody apart. Otherwise, it's nice and heavy. I actually use it to chop my wood up into smaller tinder, you know? Put it on there, use a rock, hammer on it, and you can splice through small pieces of wood really quickly. Then you're not worried about using your ax on those tiny pieces and cutting your hand off. Now, this is the original Army wet weather bag. It's uh, about as big as the rucksack. So like in basic training, you learn to put the bag in there and then fill your rucksack and twist the wet weather bag around and everything in your ruck is gonna be dry, but you also have a very flotation ready rucksack. I don't like to use it all the time because it really fucking stinks. But if I ever have to pack up in a hurry and just throw stuff in the ruck, I will pull this out throw everything in the bag, tie it, and then I can go quickly. I don't have to worry about getting things into plastic bags. So next to water, this is probably the second most important thing you can ever carry in the field, baby wipes. I was only out for a night, so I just brought that many, but guys, you better have baby wipes or you'll be cutting your shirts up. And of course, when I go do military stuff, I got my extra flag just to let everybody know that freedom is in the area. Now this is your basic butane mini stove and this thing is great. I just took this to Latvia last summer doing some army training, uh, 20 days on the road. This is the same canister, so good stuff, man. And this was cheap. If you're ever in Europe, you gotta, you gotta go to Decathlon. It's, it's actually the largest sporting goods store in the world and it's awesome. So as I said, I just came back. Everything is pretty much haphazardly thrown in here but this is generally what I carry running around in the winter. This is my extra pair of socks. I was actually issued these. When I came in, when I first got to Germany, they are wool and they are thick and they are warm as hell. I use them as my sleeping socks. I don't like to walk in them because they're so old, they would just fall straight down and rub everywhere. You don't want rubbing and you don't want loose material in your shoes. So when I'm ready to bed down, I'll throw these on on top of whatever socks I'm wearing as long as they're dry. And I will be good for the night. This will usually be in a plastic bag. Here's my ECWCS Generation 7. This is your second level or warming layer. In the Army, we call these Waffle Top and Waffle Bottom. It's just that simple. So when you say Waffle Top or Bottom, everybody knows what you're talking about. So usually when we're setting in for camp, I have a thicker pair of pants I'll throw on and then I'll throw these on under them and I'm good for the night in the winter. Now, this is one of my accessory bags. Sometimes I'll put a thicker jacket in here to compress it, but otherwise, if it's winter time and I'm wearing that jacket, I'll put extra things in here, such as good old thick fleece ski mask. I have an extra fleece that I will throw on my thicker jacket if need be. And this is probably my favorite thing in the winter time ever to sleep in. A good old Alaskan or Russian style winter hat. Now this actually isn't real fur, it's synthetic. I like synthetic stuff better. In my experience, it's held up better. So synthetic stuff, it's the future guys. Time to catch up. Pro tip. A cool thing about these stuff sack bags, whether you're putting your jacket in there or accessories like I'm doing, it still has a purpose at night. Many of you know in the winter time, you should put things that you wanna keep warm in your sleeping bag so they stay warm all night. So what if you have a phone and cables and all kinds of crap? Well, I put mine in this stuff sack and close it up and I'll put it down to my feet so they stay warm. And also, then I don't have all kinds of different pieces of gear thrown into my fart sack. So every time I shift or roll over, I got a Leatherman in my back or something because you know I don't sleep with that stuff strapped to me. I take it all off, throw it in here put it by my feet and it's warm. And then in the summertime, I will just hang it up on the outside. So this is like my field nightstand, I guess. All right, I think the light is good enough. Now, 
Oh yeah, my favorite pair of gloves ever. This company, I'm gonna do an entire video on them, but Solognac, Solognac, it's French. I'm gonna have to learn how to say it. They make some of the best hunting and outdoor stuff you can find, especially for the price. So these bad boys are nice and thick and warm, water resistant, but if you need some dexterity or it's there's too warm, bam, right there, there you go. And you can also use touch screens with these. I've tried it. And you have a water resistant zipper. I've seen brands that make these costing over a hundred dollars. These cost 19 euros at Decathlon, which is about 23, 24 bucks. So guys, I've tested these out. As I always say, price does not equal quality. So as I said, this is my winter setup. I have my basic issue bivy cover, and inside of that I have the green sleeping bag. The green sleeping bag is good for down to 30 degrees, which is just below freezing. I believe that is like minus two or three Celsius. In Germany, that's not warm enough, but with the bivy cover, and then all the clothes I'm wearing, I'm good to go. This is a major difference between a lot of civilian campers or outdoorsmen and military guys. We are usually prepared to jump up and go anytime. And you can apply that same principle to stealth camping. You should be, a, you should be ready to pack up and break contact, get the hell out of there at a moment's notice. Well, you can't do that if you're packed into four sleeping bags in your boxer shorts and everything is just strewn about your tent. But it does help to sleep in your clothes. All you gotta do, rip the zipper open, which with the army sacks you can do. You could just pu pull the zippers apart, throw your shoes on, pack your shit up, and get out of there. So yes, just the green army sleeping bag and the bivy are not warm enough, but since I sleep in my clothes anyway, I extend that range down to way below freezing, so I'm good to go. Lastly, this is something else, kind of a comfort item. I got my pillow that stuffs into itself. Those are always cool. And then I have my sleeping bag liner. Now, what is a sleeping bag liner for? The whole concept of a sleeping bag liner is you set up your rug, you stuff the liner in there, or when you're packing to go out, before you even pack your sleeping bag, you put the liner in there and pack it with your sleeping bag. The whole point is if you're dirty or all messed up, you're not messing up your actual sleeping bag. This is the ECWCS level seven. That's your extreme weather parka. Guys, this thing is so comfy and it is so warm. Best thing, it has these huge nets to put in there so stuff is next to your body to get body heat. All I did was, this is an extra coat I got a hold of. I just ripped the name tape things off, but this is a great jacket. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. If you can think of a better way to do things, I'm all ears. I love to learn, even though I've been doing this for a while. So hit me up if you have suggestions on how to better my loadout. But this is basically what a lot of us soldiers carry, or at least the experienced soldiers that don't want to make the same mistake twice. So the only thing I'm really missing from the Army side are some MREs and a bunch of ammo, which is why we kind of go light on the MacGyver gear, because we have to worry about cold weather stuff because you can't always make a fire and water, food, and ammo. We just don't have the luxury of carrying all the cool gear, okay? You know what? If you go for 30 days in the same clothes, it's the military. It's what you signed up for. Get used to it. And hey, that's what you bring baby wipes along for, right? Baby wipe shower. I've done it in Iraq for four months straight. You could do it for a couple days. You'll be all right. So I've gotten a great response from you hikers out there. I'm gonna start doing some Q and A's because I've got a lot of questions about uh, some of the military style things that we're doing. There's a lot of similarities between civilian outdoor guys and us, but there are also a lot of things we do very different. So hit me up with some questions, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, right here in the comments. You can send me an email, message on YouTube, whatever. And I will try to get to your question. Until then guys, stay safe, out.